sure the new heaven and the new earth will be much uh, better than that again. These are coming from the Free Grace Evangelical Church Mullingar and we welcome you to listen to the topic of rescuing the planet. That's a big task, rescuing the planet. The new heaven and the new earth. Uh, you can read it in Isaiah 65, 17 to 25 and then it con continues on into chapter 66, 1 to 24. Uh, and our theme is rescuing the planet. Uh, there is uh, the prediction in verses 17 to 25 of this chapter 65. And then the plan, God's plan in chapter 66 verses 1 to 24. So we'll have enough uh, this morning to look at uh, this, uh, the prediction. The prediction, Isaiah chapter 65 17 to 25. Now, some of this obviously would be fulfilled by the return of the Jews from exile. As they turned, came back from Babylon, and some of these things would be fulfilled. But some things are going beyond that uh, to the end time. So they, and they've entitled it for want of a, a word, rescuing the planet. Some people think they can rescue this world. Some people it's uh, caring for the environment. Some people let's tell you, oh I don't want even that little leaflet, you know, because it means the trees have been cut down. Uh, and they don't want trees cut. They want to save the, the timber. They want to save these trees. And they think that will keep this world. And they think they're going to. But you mm -hmm. see, there's a God, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Who is able to rescue this world. And he's got a promise of a new heaven and new earth. I know there's many things happen between then. Well, you see that Isaiah doesn't dwell on that. Uh, and he's really gone to the big thing at the end. All right, the prediction. What three things should govern our outlook on life? That's the main thing, isn't it? What three things should govern our outlook in life? So let's think about these. Who am I? First of all, really, who am I? I'm a person God made. Where am I going? Where am I going to? Right. And what do I expect? What really is ahead? What is the end result? As I said, there's many things happen between the time uh, where uh, Isaiah is not dealing on that uh, and I'm not going to uh, you know, that would be a huge uh, um, bit to, to look at all that. Uh, we're just looking at the passage here because we're doing, we normally do um, consecutive uh, expository preaching. Sometimes we dwell on topics, maybe on the Sunday evening on topics, when the morning is normally expository preaching. So, the prediction, the future promised. This future promised. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come to mind. Wow, that'd be great. So he's promising us, isn't he? That all the things that happened in the past. Is not going to be, and God is not going to bring it up. And all the things that are in the world, uh, the weeds, the fallen world that we're in. That's going to be gone. We're going to, that, and it will be totally blanked out of our minds. And uh, the great thing, I suppose, is talking about how we can learn to bury the past. You know, God will rejoice. Verses 18 and 19. God will rejoice then. Um, and be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, 
and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. And, uh, you know, we reminded already that that was something that was terrible. That was terrible under, under King Manasseh uh, and the things he did. Uh, and there was awful blood running in, in, in Jerusalem. And then especially, of course, when the Babylonians came to take it, uh, and take them into captivity as well. So, but God will rejoice and all that will change. Right. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. The rebuke of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And when uh, Israel came back from captivity, uh, that, was, oh, that was all taken away. When Cyrus issued the decree that they could come back, of course, there was great joy and happiness. But of course, it wasn't total, wasn't it? The only, uh, the only really change is, is in the new heaven and new earth, as we read in, in Revelation, really, because that he's, uh, they, this echoes the words of, of Revelation, doesn't it? There'd be no more death, there'd be no more crying, there'd be no more pain. The former things have passed away. And it's very similar language, isn't it? So it's, it's really shown that there's the real fulfilment of it is that in, in, in the end. Uh, and the new heaven and the new earth. So it reminds us of uh, there those words in Revelation, doesn't it? Right? The future problems. Yeah. No more, there was the promises we looked at, the future problems. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days. Now an old man who has not fulfilled his days, for the child shall die one hundred years old, but the sinner being one hundred years old shall be accursed. And so, for this there would be a judgment of course, and uh, uh, we're told in Revelation, we can't quite understand, of course, fully, but there'd be, yeah, there'd be no more sin, no more death. Uh, and uh, there's no way that a sinner, that one who is not saved, gets in to this new heaven and new earth. So we note verses 21 to 23. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall the days of my people and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. And so Israel, of course, would come back, they would rebuild, they would work. Uh, but I'm afraid it's not fully, is it? Uh, they didn't quite, it's not really, uh, they did lose that and... Uh, you know, they lost their nation. And uh, it, uh, it did in some way happen for a time. But of course, the real fulfillment, I, I don't know, I don't know if there'll be, uh, what way it'll be in the, in the new heaven and new earth, in the new earth there would be, the established new earth. Um, and I'm sure it's not meaning little here, there could be houses, there may be. Uh, some think that this is restoring back to what Eden was like uh, and the perfect in that world that that was. Uh, and that may be so. Uh, and if that in that case, we wouldn't need houses to live in. We wouldn't need uh, all that. Uh, maybe they will uh, uh, build, uh, they will need them. I, I don't know. Uh, but. Uh, the main thing is, you see, that it's speaking of what? Success. It's speaking of peace and, and a change. It's speaking of uh, a, a new world, a new system, a new way. And uh, it's speaking of prosperity and blessing uh, and hope. And uh, there, there would be uh, no future problems. There'd be problems, of course, for, us, for Israel to come back again. Uh, it'll be great for some time. But of course then that will change when they lost their nation. Yeah. 
do. But then it was wonderful that got it restored again in 1948. So, the future. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. And so that's a wonderful, uh, there's a wonderful promise there at the end, though. It shall come to pass that while they call, the people calling upon him. In the day of our trouble, we have to call upon God. He's the one we come to bring our, our particular requests and petitions to. I will He says, what? I will answer. He's the one who will answer. Perhaps. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. And so is. And that's an encouragement for us today, isn't it? As we think upon that. As we take that first to heart, do you see? And God will hear. And God will answer. Even before, that's uh, in the new, for, for the Christian, I'm sure, for the new, new economy, the new way. He will answer. He will help. The future is peaceful, eh? We heard a little bit about lions already, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, this says, reminding us that the, the lion will lie down with the lamb. What is it speaking of? It's speaking of a. This obviously is not for Israel, you know, as it would be coming back from the exile. So it has to go beyond that, doesn't it? So it's speaking of the, the future is peaceful. And it speaks of the, the lion. <coughs> and the lamb together. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The, the lion shall eat straw with the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Now, I'm sure Isaiah, uh, uh, when he's speaking about this and directed by God, it's not all working uh, maybe at the one time, you see. We've seen that already. It looks that he's saying one thing maybe that will happen at one time and another thing that may happen at another time. And he mentions those that are, uh, are um, uh, not, uh, seem to be not believers. Uh, then they, that must be before this new heaven and new earth because we know the new heaven and new earth has no... Uh, uh, sentiment, no, none of those people would be unbelievers and those uh, uh, that uh, don't believe in God could not be there. And it says then, and dust shall be the serpent's food. To remind them, you know, that's what he was condemned in the Garden of Eden to go in his belly. And, and that's the defeat of evil, isn't it? Uh, and that's the defeat of evil in this world, isn't it? And for those who want to follow that way, they would be with that, wouldn't they? So the defeat of the enemy, the defeat of all that's against God, uh, and that all would be gone, wouldn't it, before uh, this particular, you know, it wouldn't happen with the wolf and the lamb lying down together. And the serpent certainly uh, wouldn't be there. Uh, so that's an interesting one too, of course, would it be? Uh, snakes. Uh, they tell me there was no snakes in Ireland, uh, and uh, the snakes that Patrick drove out was the was the druid priest, uh, which would be pointing of the old paganism that was uh, that he uh, overcame, and the druid system in Ireland. So, uh, and I suppose that's something like that here too. Uh, the end of the just a reminder that this old evil would be destroyed. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy land. So the serpent, their snakes are dangerous and they're venomous. They're deadly. And, they, and that Satan and all his cohorts are deadly. But they will not hurt nor destroy now he says. That's in his words. In all my holy land. Now wonderful isn't it? So that's hidden that a wonderful, peaceful, that's a great promise. And, and to, to say in, in symbolic language there, of how would it be. And uh, I'm sure I don't have any problem with the, uh, 
animals being in uh, the new heaven and new earth. Uh, I don't know whether someone's particular pet will be there or not. Uh, <laughs> not to, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that detail anyway. You know, uh, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lay down. These wolves, you know, are terrible. Have you ever seen them on the nature programs? I don't know whether you uh, like watching it. Uh, Rita was saying that she squirms a bit at, at some of them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Makes you feel a bit sick if you're, if you're watching some of them and you at the, at the table, you know? <coughs> but um, <coughs> they are, they're vicious animals, but it's amazing, isn't it? This change. We, we do believe that in the Garden of Eden uh, the wild animals were tame. Uh, and there was no, uh, uh, it was only after the flood uh, and when they came out of the ark there was a change then. Uh, and uh, when, when food was, uh, they were able to kill animals for food. Anyhow, so, there it is. It seems a whole wonderful gathering together, isn't it? All right. And then the leopard, the, the lion, and the kid, and the goat, <laughs> and, and the little child shall lay them eye. Um, uh, of course, it's what reminded us in where Isaiah, another part of Isaiah, uh, chapter 11, isn't it? The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lay down. So that's really showing that there's a total change, yeah, isn't it? It's a wonderful world. It's not like the world we have today. Uh, and, and, and as I was reminded at the beginning, you know, what are we looking for? What are we ho hoping for? We want to think of who we are, where we are going, and what's there. You know, the one man that, that reminded me of this was Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones. And he was had his eyes on oh, where he's going. I know there may be great difficulties and questions about how you get there, but the whole thing is three things to keep in mind. And a little child shall leave. The cow and the bear shall graze. No, that's not normal, is it? No. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Huh? So the lion will not be out to get his roar and to get his prey, will he? He'll not be gone, he'll not be for the <coughs> uh, he'll not be thirsty after the blood of animals. He he a total change again then back to a kind of a vegetarian uh, way, you know. Not that I'm totally vegetarian, you know. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. No fear and no worry in the pit. <gasps> Don't go there. Oh! <laughs> you know, the parents wouldn't, 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 be, wouldn't be scared about that, eh? And the wean child shall put his hand in the viper's den. So there'll be vipers there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. They shall not hurt that a change, hasn't it? You know, in this world today, there's so much hurt, isn't there? There's so much sadness when you hear about these things. That man who beat his, his wife to death, you know, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and now, uh, you know, trying to get excuses for it. But it's so sad, isn't it? And the different things that happen in the world today, they should not hurt. We hurt with our words, don't we? We hurt in different ways, uh, and we are to be reminded that that's, you know, the new world, the new person, the new creation. And we're living for the Lord, aren't we, in these days? We're living for Him, uh, and to please Him, and to follow Him. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Why? For the earth shall be filled full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. My friends, you know, Isaiah has got 
something in mind. He's going for a special thing. He's going for that end of the day, isn't he? And really the answer is the Lord. And it's the knowledge of the Lord, and it's the hope in Him, and the trust in Him. It's our dependence in Him. And our future is bright. Isn't that what a great missionary said when he was taken captive by the in Burma? What did he say? They said to him, Oh, Mr. Judson, where is your Christianity now? Where is your Christian faith now? What's going to happen to it? And he said, The future is as bright what as the promises of God. That's what we hold on to. Those promises. Maybe it's a difficult day. Difficult night. Maybe a difficult time. But yet, we turn to those promises, you see, because that's the answer. We hope in the Lord. We don't get downcast. We hope in Him. Yes, I. So, rescuing the planet. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. That'll be it. That's what he's designed for. That's because he led man astray. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. So we hope, trust in that, we believe in God's word, and how we can be kept from destruction. How we can be kept uh, from, uh, in that wonderful way, following the Lord, and uh, keep our eyes upon Him, and the future, of course, He's designed for us. So, thank you very much.